Outstanding. So hi everyone, my name is Michael Oftenomov and I'm a solutions consultant here at BlueShift. I wanna thank you all so much for joining me today in our demo series. So as the title suggests, today we're gonna to be discussing the importance of being able to embed personalized and predictive content across many different channels with a high throughput and total message send volume. So we'll explore not only how BlueShift enables you to embed predictive content for all of your customers in every single marketing message, but we're also going to see how simple this is to do as a non-technical user of BlueShift. We'll also take a look at how we can measure the uplift expected as a result of embedding this predictive content within our messaging or even on our website and in our mobile apps. This is of course more important uh, than ever in today's environment, given how user behavior has rapidly changed over this past year to become increasingly reliant on digital channels for making purchases. Customers today are inundated with messaging and information from dozens of brands. So we'll be exploring how to send content that is both deeply personalized as well as timely for your end users without having a dedicated data science team every time we wanna make one of these personalized and machine learning based recommendations. So the agenda for today is very straightforward. We're gonna briefly spend five minutes discussing who BlueShift is and why we'll be able to help you scale your campaigns with personalized content and recommendations. The goal of this is of course, not only to serve content and recommendations that your users will love and engage with, but that will ultimately result in more sales or conversions. So whether I'm making an upsell recommendation to users that recently bought a piece of athleisure clothing, or I wanna share a blog post on how to improve your credit score to users that are still building credit, BlueShift is gonna make all of these use cases incredibly to, uh, to do across every channel. From there, we're gonna spend most of today's session uh, inside the actual platform, taking a look at how easy it is to build these machine learning based recommendations that serve personalized content to every user at scale. I'm also gonna share with all of you some key insights gleaned by an empirical study that we conducted on billions of messages sent via BlueShift. So now I'd like to share a little background with everyone regarding who BlueShift is. As a sales engineer, I promise you, I have a strong aversion to lengthy PowerPoints. So I'm gonna keep this super brief and then we'll spend most of our time in the actual platform. Now it's time for the NASCAR slide with all the important logos and brands. So at a high level, BlueShift provides a robust smart hub CDP that helps brands intelligently scale customer engagement on every single channel. And all of that is of course powered by a built-in AI and machine learning tech. So as you can see here, we work with a number of different brands across a variety of industries. We're also backed by some of the world's leading investors. BlueShift has been recognized by a number of major research and advisory firms, such as Gartner and Forrester. Our platform has also been voted on and validated by our customers as a leader in the CDP and marketing automation space on G2 Crowd. And finally, we also ensure the security of our clients' data so that you're confident in knowing that you're always ahead of the curve in terms of meeting compliance and local regulations, such as with GDPR and CCPA. In terms of flexibility, BlueShift partners with all of your favorite data platforms, tag management systems, and other third-party vendors so that marketers like yourselves can seamlessly connect and integrate with all of your existing systems. So now we've talked a little bit about who we are, let's dive into how BlueShift works at a high level. So BlueShift takes your first and third party customer data about both known and anonymous users from your various data sources. And then we create individual customer profiles and we enhance them with important information. BlueShift is gonna use AI to make predictions about your customers including predicting the likelihood of purchase or any other sort of event or outcome, what products we should recommend. And then of course we make it simple to embed those recommendations inside of our messages, as well as on our website or our mobile applications. We also help you figure out when to send these messages. What is the optimal time of day? Not just looking at when is a user historically engaged with a certain type of message, but also what are the downstream events? For example, if I send Mike a push notification and I notice he not only opened it, but he browsed many different items and he made a purchase in that session, those are all gonna be accounted for in terms of figuring out what time of day we wanna send. And then of course, we also help you with figuring out where to engage your users. So by combining your customer data with BlueShift's AI and omni-channel journeys, we're gonna make it really easy to deliver one-to-one -one personalization everywhere. And beyond that, BlueShift seamlessly captures all customer interactions for those personalized messages and uses it uh, to continuously and automatically 
uh, improve our predictions so that the customer experience is always relevant and updated. This is not just a one-time batch in which we're figuring out what does your customer have a propensity for, uh, which recommendations are powerful. We're constantly doing that computation as we receive more behavioral information on your users. So now that you're familiar with what BlueShift does as a, at a high level, let's go ahead and start with the product demo to explore specifically how simple it is to use and how easy it is to embed all of this different predictive content. So here we are, we've now jumped into our campaign journey flow. So just at a high level, you can see we're in the campaign section. I next wanna draw your attention to the fact that this is a segment triggered campaign. Intuitively enough, that means when a user has entered into a segment that we've built out in the segment section, they will enter into this campaign and they'll start running through these messages and seeing which ones they qualify for. Out of the box, we also support many different types of campaigns, whether it be event triggered, one time sense, recurring, API based. So any way you can envision architecting a campaign, we can most definitely support that. I also want to draw your attention to the fact that we make it easy to manage these. Of course, our enterprise customers or our more savvy, uh, smaller customers tend to have dozens, if, if not more, campaigns. So being able to tag them or specify a start date is super useful. Last thing I want to draw your attention to before we jump into the actual messaging component is we're going to show you a nice preview of users that are currently believed to be in this segment. Now, of course, uh, if I schedule this for a future date, that might change and we'll be evaluating it at time of launch. But it's really nice just to have this scoped out ahead of time so that, you know, I've, I've worked as a support engineer before and there's nothing worse than launching a campaign and you accidentally only have five users in that campaign. So it's just nice to be armed with that information ahead of time. So now that a user has qualified for this segment triggered campaign, they've entered into this campaign, we're going to follow down top to the bottom, left to right, in terms of evaluating which message a user should receive. So first things first, a user is going to enter into this block right here, and we're going to evaluate whether or not they should receive this email series. So here we can see, I can specify any sort of time delay. I can uh, use a feature called day parting to ensure that we're only sending messages at a certain time of date based upon a user's time zone. I can add any sort of conditional logic or additional segment logic. So this allows me to branch a user from one path to another based on if they qualify. And then finally, of course, we are embedding our creative. Here I'm doing a very simple A-B test and specifying a certain percentage of users are uh, are in each of these variants. Later on in Insights, we'll be able to see which variant is actually performing best. Now here, we're actually getting to the crux of what we want to discuss today, which is inside of my emails, we can see our first example of predictive content. So here, I'm making some recommendations. You might may or may not be familiar with the Blue Blue Lemon uh, Athleisure brand. It's, it's up and coming. But here we have several different items that I'm recommending to our user. What I have done here is I've hopped in my recommendation engine. I've selected a certain algorithm or a basis by which I want to embed these items. And then of course, in my creative, I simply hit a merge tag and I choose which items from a point and click solution uh, or a point and click option, uh, which items I want to embed inside this actual creative. So I'm not sure if we'll have time to do that, but I just want to highlight the fact that it's super easy having built the recommendation you just hit the merge tag button to embed these different components. And of course, this is all personalized to a specific user. So this is going to be evaluated for every single user that we're sending this out to. And of course, if I wanna change who I'm previewing this for, I can do that right here. But instead, we'll just see which sort of items is stand going to be recommended. Now let's go ahead and drop down this pathing, take a look at some of the other channels. So here we also support SMS, push, in-app message. And you can see in this lovely carousel right here, we still make it very easy to embed all those recommendations independent of channel. So how engaging is this to be able to see a push notification with products that are, are recommended and tailored to my interests. So let's say Mike has been constantly browsing nothing but men's athleisure shorts, Blue Shift can easily optimize for the fact that Michael has propensity for browsing and buying men's athleisure shorts, and then embed those recommendations as you see right here. Last thing I wanna highlight, just a general usability feature. It's not just the channels you see here. Anywhere you see this plus sign, I can also add an additional message. 
So let's just quickly take a look at some of those channels we also support right here. Um, as you can see, let's say I want to leverage direct mail. Let's say I want to message a user on WhatsApp. We make that really easy to consolidate every single messaging or any type of data that I want to share with, with a third-party vendor as part of this holistic campaign. Outstanding. So now that we've seen the end state of a campaign, we've seen how recommendations are embedded across any single message that I want to use. Let's actually get into, well, how do I build this recommendation? We're going to do that just by changing screens here. I've hopped into the recommendation section. First things first, I want to draw your attention to the left hand side. These are the different types of recommendations that we can support. And if that looks a little limited, keep in mind in every single one of those different categories, we have many different algorithms that you can choose from or different uh, sorting types. So let's uh, next draw, I wanna draw your attention over here to the right hand side. Once more, I am previewing the items that would be recommended based upon a specific user profile. So if I wanna do a quick Q and A, a quick sanity check, I can also preview for a different user. And then we'll see that Stan has been recommended these four items based upon some sort of criteria. So then moving back to the left-hand side, let's just run through how we build out these recommendations and what sort of algorithms are available to us. So if I click on events, this is the most straightforward and intuitive way of building a recommendation. This is of course, based upon a user's behavior. So as you feed us those uh, events based upon website or uh, app activity, we're of course gonna parse those in real time. And what we'll be able to do is I can add some logic saying, well, let's show items to Stan based upon what he has viewed in a certain time frame. But I wanna of course exclude anything that he has actually purchased. Not exactly a good user experience to show items or recommend items that a user's already purchased. So this is nice, but what if I want something a little more robust? Let's say I want to explicitly exclude a certain category, or I only want to draw items from a particular category, knowing that uh, Stan perhaps likes only shorts. What I can do is hit this filter options button, and that's going to allow me to do uh, a lot more specificity in building out these recommendations. So you're going to see options for out of stock, uh, excluding out of stock. I can exclude past purchases. I can include products with a certain, uh, with the same parent product. And then of course, as I alluded to earlier, if I want to only include certain categories of items or exclude certain categories of items, I can do that as well. Let's say I only wanna show items of a certain color or of a certain price range. We also allow you to do that based upon the attributes of that catalog item. Now we don't have time to dump, jump in it today, but I also wanna point out huge differentiator for Blue Ship as a smart hub CDP. Not only do we have this notion of who a user is, what they're doing, both on your website, app, and anywhere else that you're feeding us behavioral data, but we also have this distinct notion of a catalog item. And this can of course be represented as, you know, some piece of athleisure, or it can be also intangible things like a piece of blog content on how to rebuild your credit or how to save or invest. And so it doesn't just need to be physical products in, in the context of these recommendations. Our most robust, our most savvy customers are leveraging uh, this not only for perhaps physical items, but also blog posts or any other content that we might wanna personalize for the user. So now that we've run through how to build the recommendations with events, this is nice, but it's, it's a little straightforward. It doesn't leverage any machine learning. Let's take a look at our first machine learning based recommendation. So here under related items, what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, through the power of collaborative filtering, we're going to take a look at a certain event as well as all of the users historical events to figure out which items we should show. Now the first step is just specifying what event do I want to show uh, items related to. So let's say Mike has bought nothing but men's athleisure shorts uh, and I want to show him items related to those purchase events. I'm just going to choose the purchase event from here, choose the time frame, and then the final step here is choosing how we want to rank these items. So we have many different options here. Of course, this is a test environment, so I uh, I didn't preload this with tons of ranks, uh, ranking options. But I also want to highlight the fact that we can build out custom business logic. So let's say you want to rank by uh, I don't know, pricing, or I want to rank by which users not only purchase, but have purchased at least two 
items from a certain category, we can easily load that business logic here into these rank buys. And so what you'll see in our, our uh, more savvy customers instances is that they'll have a dozen plus of these different rank buy uh, algorithms. And that makes it really simple to make sure that we're ranking items in a certain order based upon proclivity to purchase or price range or what have you. And what's so nice is this is also going to be tailored to every single individual. So once more, because it's machine learning based, I'm going to, this is all going to be tailored to items related to what the individual user has purchased. I don't need to make several different iterations of this recommendation. I just need to choose the basis by which I want to recommend it. And then Blue Shift does all that heavy lifting, assuming you're feeding us in that user behavior data and updating your catalog where appropriate. Up next, we have predictive content, uh, arguably the most powerful, certainly my favorite one. And what we're gonna do here is based upon a user's affinity, we'll make this recommendation. So earlier we talked a little bit about how we not only have this notion of users, but we also have a distinct entity of catalog or a catalog item. And so because we can observe how users are engaging with those items in a catalog, and because those catalog items have different attributes such as price or availability or color, we can observe what user, uh, what a user has an affinity towards. And so here under predictive content, the first step is just choosing how I wanna pick these items. So I'm choosing whatever Michael or whatever any of my users have a top affinity for in terms of categories. And then I'm gonna rank those items that Michael has a, a high affinity towards based upon what is most likely or what has converted well historically. So here I get the robustness of machine learning. I don't have to wait on my data science team. I don't have to necessarily uh, wait for them to feed in that data to a smart hub CDP in order for me to leverage it. So it's really accessible, really intuitive, and then hopefully saving your team some time and headache from having to feed in that data to any sort of marketing automation or smart hub CDP, such as BlueShift. And then last thing I wanted to cover is item attributes. Um, let's say I want to show, let's say I have a brand new user. I have no historical behavioral data on them. Well, then what algorithm should I use in terms of showing them items that are, are likely to convert or likely to result in the sale? This is where item attributes comes in. What I can do is I can just choose something very, very straightforward, such as which of my items have been the best selling in the last 28 days. And then when and if a user becomes known and we start building that profile on who they are, and their behavior and what are their interests, then we can lean on those machine learning based um, recommendations. But for now, for this brand new user for which I have no information on, I might just wanna do something like the top selling products in the last 28 days. Awesome, just being mindful of time here, I see we have 11 minutes. So let's wrap things up here in recommendations. So just to recap, we have many different algorithms for figuring out how we wanna build these recommendations. Having built this recommendation, the next step is then just hopping, hopping into our creative builder, click, uh, choosing the creative that we want to build, and then clicking on the merge tag button and selecting the item that we want to insert. So again, the emphasis here is we've productized building out machine learning, building out personalized content, and made it accessible for your non-technical users. So you don't have to lean on many different teams to get this done. Uh, making recommendations is super easy and can be done by a single non-technical marketer. Also want to highlight the fact that these recommendations don't just exist in the context of sending messages to your users. What a lot of Blue Shift customers do today is they embed these same recommendations and algorithms on their actual website via what we call live content. So live content just gives you a block. It allows us to programmatically insert different recommendations to your users. And once more, as we begin to learn more and more about who they are, what uh, categories they have an affinity towards, that'll be ro more robust. And of course, the, the end result that we're driving towards is more conversions, more sales. And this allows me to very easily do that. Outstanding. So now we've covered campaigns. We've seen the end state of everything we're doing. We've walked through building out a recommendation, what is involved in that process, and how do I embed that inside of a creative or on my website, or mobile app. Now, let's actually jump into what we call insights to actually glean how are my recommendations performing? How are my A-B tests performing? Which variant is the best at driving revenue? Which, uh, 
which email provider has the highest bounce rate, we can answer all of those questions in the context of an insight report. So over here, we're taking a look at insights. The first step is just choosing a metric that we want to measure. So of course, always relevant, always something to be mindful of is revenue. So we're going to manage and attribute uh, all of the different revenue generated by a given uh, message. Then I'm going to choose my time frame, and then I'm simply going to choose my group by option. So here, if I want to group this by the segment, uh, whether or not they use send time optimization that Blue Shift provided, whether or not it just binary uses a recommendation versus no recommendation, these are all things that we can easily take a look at right here. And then drawing our attention over here to this nice visualization and then the more quantitative table that we see, we can see that recommending products based upon views has generated the most revenue. Now, I think many of you are, are like, are hopefully thinking, well, that's good, but what if I'm using a recommendation three times as often as another recommendation? Wouldn't it stand to reason that it has more revenue and shouldn't we control for that? And that is a great point. And to do that, what we would do is hop in here under metric. And instead of just choosing uh, an absolute figure like revenue, what we can do is come over here to compound metrics and instead uh, evaluate the revenue on a per click or on a per user basis. And so what we've just done is we built out this compound metric. It looks at revenue per unique click. And then clicking on that, we can see this on a, a more uh, per person or per click basis so that we're not, we're controlling for the fact that a recommendation might be leveraged several more times than another recommendation. And so here in that context on a unique click basis, we see that the abandoned cart where we show the next best product has actually been performing best in terms of driving revenue. So once more insights allows you to figure out which item inside of a campaign is performing best, which recommendation is performing best, um, does actually using a recommendation result in any sort of uplift? We can answer all of these questions. Now, without a doubt, if you're using a dedicated BI tool, that'll likely be, you know, just full transparency, that'll likely be more robust than the offering we provide. And to that end, we also can easily pipe in this same underlying data to any BI tool you're using today. So even if you continue to use your dedicated BI tool, this is just a nice way to a quick sanity check and check those uplifts very quickly without having to jump into another solution. Outstanding. So that concludes the demo portion of, of today's uh, webinar. So let's jump right back into our presentation. So I hope that was useful for everyone. Uh, today we focused on how easy it was to scale our campaigns with personalized and predictive content. And now I want to uh, provide some empirical evidence supporting some of the things that we discussed. So to that end, Blue Shift conducted a study of over 14.9 billion messages sent by our current customers. And here are some of the findings of that report. Uh, finding number one, email. Sorry, let me make sure you can actually see the metrics I'm about to talk about. There we are. So email triggered in response to a user's behavior are 497% more effective than batch and blast campaigns, 468% higher click-through rate, and a 525% higher conversion rate. Push notifications uh, triggered that are triggered in response to some type of behavior or condition are almost 1,500% more effective than batch and blast campaigns with a 279% higher click-through rate and a 2,700% higher conversion rate. Predictive recommendations are 116% more effective than non-predictive recommendations. So if you recall, those middle two options that we had in the recommendation screen were predictive and very robust and once more computed on blue shifts end through no effort of you, or through no effort of our customers. And then the final finding and uh, one that, that validates some of the things we've been discussing, Omnichannel campaigns are 283% more effective than single journey campaigns, uh, which is to say omnichannel campaigns at a 234% higher click-through rate and a 331% higher conversion rate. These are of course staggering figures and really drives home this idea that serving our users with personalized and programmatic content results in more conversions. So that concludes the public demo coming in right on time. I hope this is useful to everyone. 
if your organization isn't where it wants to be in terms of automating your omni-channel strategy or creating and serving up predictive content to your users across many different channels, uh, we'd love to speak with you further and build out a more comprehensive custom-based demo rather than the, the more generic one and brief one we provided you today. Um, please feel free to reach out. Otherwise, I hope you all have a safe and enjoyable holiday season and new year. Thank you so much.